Hello and welcome to week four. This, you haven't seen her before, this is Britannica, AKA Brittany. She's the girl cat and we saw her brother before. All right, she's the more, as you can tell, she's the more vocal of the cats. So anyway, um, anyway, this week we're going to talk about color. As you can see, I'm wearing a very colorful shirt because we're talking color. Anyway, um, we can start. Ta-da! Okay, off the bat, we, our assignment this week is um, do fry bird, make your own flyer in color. We'll talk about it for a real life club, business, church, or organization. You know, promotional flyer. I will take drafts through Friday, or you can redo last week's assignment also in color. Up to you. So, anyway, that's what we're doing. Um, that's what we will be doing. Here are some notes. I'll show you this link in a little bit, but. Let's do color. Ta da! Color adds emotion. You can see red is a warm, hot emotion. It establishes theme, brand, or style. And you notice how this yellow is just kind of icky and hard to see. See, this is the thing with color. You have to really use it well. Black and white is just the facts. Color is emotion. It's your brand. It adds, it's you. Color comes from the color wheel. The top of the wheel is red, bottom is blue. It's basically, it's like a little roly poly bug. You stretch it out. We have uh, the purple on one end goes around and red on the other end. So uh, it's like the rainbow kind of curled up. So we'll talk about CMYK and RGB in a second, but this, is what we use to design color. Um, you see, if something touches on the color wheel, they go together. If they're the opposite on the color wheel, they stand out from each other. So if you want your yellow to stand out, put it on a blue background. You want your green to stand out, put it on a red background. We'll get to that. But the color wheel, shows a lot. You can see the meanings. Red color, you talk about emotions. Intense, blood, energy, danger, because what in the natural world is, is red is blood, fire, things that you should worry about. Uh, violet is royalty. It's a noble color because it was very rare, wealth, ambition. Blue is calmness. Green, nature, serenity. Yellow is sunshine, cheerfulness. And orange, stimulating enthusiasm, happiness. But we can not, but sometimes you could use color poorly. As a matter of fact, we'll show you bad color. There, it's like somebody threw a paint can. The blue on this dark green can't read it. Blue on blue is okay. Why do we have these boxes? You can't read what the heck this is going. This green, you can't, again, can't see what's going on. It's typography is as bad as anything. OMG. Light objects on a light background. You, you can't read this type. 
I mean, you know, green, a light green on a, 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 on a snot yellow. No. Yeah. Too bright. You see the color and not the content. Way too many colors. It, it detracts from your uh, message. Whoa, way too many colors. What the heck is that? You know, again, bad, bad, bad use of color. So this is bad color. We'll show you in a second how to use good color. Again, opposites on the color wheel give you contrast, closer together, are complementary. But too close can be a little disconcerting. You know, if you have this green, a Kelly green, and a teal green, it's almost like they clash. If they're too close together, you know, for it, it's like uh, if a, um, like Beethoven, da 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 da, it has that real change. If it's a slight change, da da da, da eh, not, not as good. So colors should be a step or two away from each other. Again, yellow and orange blend in with each other. Yellow and red may be a better combination. Yellow and green can blend in. But if you have yellow and green, maybe more of, like I say, this Kelly green or teal. See, I know a little about color. I am a fall. Anyway, too close can be disconcerting. When you do a, um, when you do, a, a project have like one color, like a dominant color, and then a contrast to it. It's like having a big headline. That dominant color is something you see. And everybody sees color differently. Understand that. It's like you go to the Walmart and see all the TVs. All the TVs look a little different. That's what's going on in your eyes. My eye is going to see different than yours. Some people see more reds, some people see more blues. So remember, not everybody sees it the same way. Have you ever wondered how some artists are able to find perfect color combinations that just seem to work every time? It's not just art, it's science, and we call it color theory. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use the color wheel and some basic formulas known as color harmonies to choose color combinations that are appealing, cohesive, and just look good. Using color harmonies, you can evoke certain emotions, create a mood, or add context to your images. When you don't use color harmony, your art can appear bland and boring or so chaotic that your brain can't process it properly. So let's start at the beginning. You may remember back at school where you learned about primary, secondary and tertiary colours. We are taught that the primary colours are red, blue and yellow. When mixed together, these make the secondary colours, green, orange and purple. Take it a step further and you'll get the tertiary colours, yellow, green, red, orange and so on. These make up the traditional colour wheel. It was created by Sir Isaac Newton and helps us to understand how different colours work together. The traditional colour wheel is no longer the only colour wheel that exists. There are other colour wheels and methods that are used by artists and designers to create a bigger range of colours when mixed together. The and we will get to RGB at CMYK. These colour wheels are important and we'll talk about them in a future video, but when it comes to choosing colour combinations, the traditional colour wheel is still our best resource for understanding colour harmony and how colours work together to create beautiful art. There are four main qualities of each colour on our wheel. The first is hue. This is simply the colour position around the wheel and the brightest, purest version of each colour. 
Our wheel uses 12 main colours, but we can also work with all of the hues in between. Second, we have saturation. This can also be known as intensity or chroma. This tells us how vibrant a colour is. A desaturated colour is greyed out and dull, while a saturated colour is vibrant and strong. Then we have value. This tells us how dark or light a colour is. I'll show you a little bit more with that. Here is on Photoshop, view from, uh, from Rock City near where I live. And in the distance, you can't really see seven states, but in the distance, we do have the backside of the Smoky Mountains. Anyway, the hue we can change. See, it's getting redder. Hue is the dominant color, or it's getting more purple. See red on one side of the spectrum, purple on the other. So leave that at about right. Saturation is the intensity of the color. See, desaturated kind of faded out. Really saturated. Look at how green the greens are and yellow the yellows are. But it's like unreal. This is about where it was. Lightness, it's really bright to the point that it's faded out or really dark until you don't see anything. So hue is the dominant color, saturation is the intensity of the color, and lightness is light and dark. Okay. Let's get have you ever wondered how- Let's get a little- What if you can get rid of your kitchen garbage at the push of the button? Hey, I'm Matt from Pila, and I want to introduce you to my friend, Lo. Prisma Color, Faber Castell, Derwent, Holbein, Karen Dash, and more. Today, my goal is to take some of the guesswork out of choosing pencils by putting 26. Okay, here we go back to. Frizz. We, we can we create shades of our color by adding black or tints of our color by adding white. We can also add tone by adding gray. And finally, we have temperature. The colour wheel can be split into two main groups, warm colours and cool colours. But individual colours can also change in temperature as we move around our wheel. A warm red includes more yellow and a cool red includes more blue. When we combine hue, saturation, value and temperature, we find ourselves with a myriad of variations of each of our 12 main colours. So how do we use all these colours together? We can use our 12 basic hues on the color wheel, along with some easy to follow formulas to create an endless collection of color combinations that look balanced, appealing, and just work. These formulas are known as color harmonies. The first and easiest is a monochromatic color harmony. This takes just one base color or hue from our wheel and uses different shades, tones, or tints to create a group of colors. It's one of the easiest colour harmonies to create and looks simple, cohesive and organised. Next, we have a complementary colour scheme. This takes two colours from opposite sides of the colour wheel, such as red and green or blue and orange. This type of colour scheme is great for creating strong contrast in your image. A split complementary colour scheme is similar to a complementary colour scheme except one of the colours is split into two nearby colours. This keeps the high contrast of the complementary colour scheme, but also adds more variety. A triadic colour scheme uses three colours that are evenly spaced around the colour wheel, like a triangle. Yeah, that's about as much as most people should be using. Too many different colours looks, as they said early on in one of the on this video could look really chaotic. So two to three colors is really all most people need. These color combinations are often bold and vibrant. Tetradic colors are four colors in a rectangle shape made up of two sets of complementary colors together as one palette. 
these palettes work best when you focus on one main colour and use the other colours as contrasting accents. An analogous colour scheme uses two to four colours that are next to each other on the colour wheel. This is one of the simplest and most appealing colour harmonies and works best if you choose one dominant colour and use... Bingo. Always. One dominant colour and use another as an accent or something to back, uh, for a background. The other colours as accents. These different colour harmonies are a great guide to create colours that work well together. You can create more variety by changing the shades, tones and tints within each colour palette, giving you endless ways to mix and match colours that look great. This can all be a bit overwhelming, but don't worry. After you've started applying these methods, you'll start to pick up an intuition and confidence for which colours work well together and which colours don't. Here are some general tips to help you. First, pick one dominant colour. Whichever colour harmony you choose, using one dominant colour will create a sense of balance in your design. You can choose one main colour and use the rules of colour harmonies to find other colours that work as accents or smaller details in your design. Next, use just a few colours. Simple is best. Adding too many colours in your design can... <laughs> Don't do that. ...quickly become overwhelming or chaotic to your viewers. Choosing just a few colours and applying these colour rules can create art that is bold, simple and yet still interesting. Finally, you can use colour palettes for inspiration. Learning the rules of colour theory can help you know what works well together, but it doesn't mean you have to start from scratch every time. You can find colour palettes... Oh, they're all over the place. You can use the color wheel, you can use also- Like those I've included in the color catalog that are inspired by nature or existing designs and naturally incorporate- See, one color, one color, purple and blue, purple and green, opposite sides of the color wheel, yellow, orange and red go together and they stand out a little bit from a group blue green background look at purple and yellow green and red once you start seeing these in the real world you'll just be seeing it all the time great colors that look good together there you go so a lot of stuff there. Warm and cool colors, high on the color wheel, are warm colors. The reds, the oranges, the yellow. Warm motions, you know, anger, passion, love. Cool colors are cool emotions. You know, calmness, serenity. <laughs> You probably never realized how much color plays a huge role in your company's branding and appearance. Colors evoke emotions and moods from people unlike anything else. According to the book Management Decision by Satyendra Singh, people make up their minds within 90 seconds of their initial interactions with websites or products. And uh, within 90 seconds, we're talking one or two seconds to make that first impression. Whether you like something or not, you see it right away. About 62 to 90% of the assessment is based on colors alone. This is why color plays a huge role in your online appearance. From the color you choose for your headline text to the color you pick. See, and they have this kind of light teal color here says, we're calm and cool about this. For the background, this color scheme will set the mood for your website and ultimately your brand. How do you know which colors are the right ones for your company? Finding the right colors for your brand is not hard. Ask yourself, what does your brand represent? What emotions or feelings do you associate with your brand? Now associate these feelings with their proper color. Red is an extremely stimulating color. Around the world, red is known as the color of energy. It will attract the most attention and often represents important notices and warnings. If you notice on CNN.com, they use red as an accent color. Right, red and green. They choose their um, photos and backgrounds 
based on the red and the green. At the very top of the page, they have a scrolling bar for breaking news, which they have cleverly made red. They also use the accented red for calls to actions. By using the color red as an accent color, they are drawing attention to these buttons and making them more noticeable. This is a great way to grab the viewer's attention on your website. Orange is a warm and vibrant color. It is considered to be energizing while at the same time welcoming. Orange can create a warm, welcoming feeling for your customers. Use the color orange when trying to set a warm and inviting atmosphere. Orange also radiates happiness as it's created by mixing a vibrant red with a cheerful yellow. Before choosing orange, make sure you know what emotion you are going for, as different shades of orange will represent different feelings. It's usually a warm and vibrant color. This type of orange is associated with a bright orange. Dark oranges can create a much different feel. Dark shades of orange can show signs of antiqueness or give off a vintage feel. The brand Fanta is based around. Yeah, red, orange, and yellow. They all kind of blend into each other. Green is on the other side of the color wheel. Stands out. The color orange. Notice how they use orange as their accent colors on their call to actions, as well as their main color for their font. Yellow is an extremely versatile color depending on which shade you choose. Bright yellows glow with enthusiasm and optimism and often provoke thoughts and thinking. Bright yellows will immerse your brand with color and energy. Dark shades of yellow, such as gold, represent antiquity and age. These darker shades are often related with timeliness and wisdom. Lipton Tea utilizes the color yellow to the full. Yeah. Red and yellow together on the color wheel, but we have a light yellow and a dark red, makes it stand out. And then green, Kermit just flows in. It's a very nice dominant color is obviously yellow, Red, a dark red stands out, and green is, is also just kind of blends in. So it's all one message. Holistic extent. By covering the background of their website in yellow, they are making sure their branding stays consistent. This is a great branding technique and great use of color consistency. Green gives off so many different emotions. One emotion that it gives off is the feeling of growth. It gives a sense of renewal and restores exhausted energy. This is great to use if you are looking for an environmental or healthy theme as it balances emotions and inspires compassion. Green can also represent stability and endurance. Be cautious when choosing the color green, however, as green often signifies a sense of right and wrong. Just as with CNN.com, Starbucks.com uses their logo's color as a color palette throughout their entire website. Their secondary menu item uses the same color green to accent their special sales for that week. They also utilize green for their call to action text. The color blue is often associated with calm and relaxing emotions. It's also associated with strength and reliability. Blue emits feelings of loyalty and inner security, which is why you may see technology and information security businesses using the color. Social media giants such as LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter all utilize the color blue on their networks. Was this a coincidence or a well thought out branding strategy? Here are some theories as to why the big three all chose to have a blue logo. One is that blue is a reflection of intellect in the mind, ultimately making it the color of communication. And communication is the basis of social media networks. Another theory is that blue represents reliability and trust. And our last theory is that blue is the most popular color in the world. Every website has its own color scheme. There are three common ways to mix colors, triadic, compound, and analogous. The triadic is the most common of the color schemes. On a 12-step color wheel, choose any three colors that are 120 degrees from each other. The compound scheme can be difficult to pull off, however. It can look stunning if done correctly. The concept uses four colors, two contrasting pairs and two complementary pairs. The analogous scheme focuses on complementary colors. This one really highlights the vibrancy of the colors chosen. lot going on in color, huh? Again, the colors send a message. They define your brand. Three properties. We just did that anyway. Hue, saturation, and brightness. And here's a video here, but we've basically gone over that. Reproduction. This is something you really got to think of. When you do something for the web, you need to save it as RGB and for print CMYK. RGB, red, green, and blue. Your, your um, computer screen has those three colors and everything 
is based on a mix of those colors. Uh, in print, you have cyan, which is blue, magentas are red and yellow, and K for black, because it gives you an outline. Squarespace lets you run your brand like a business with e-commerce and... It's Friday again, and it's time for another quick tip from printplace.com. Today, we're gonna to talk about something incredibly important to print design. RGB versus CMYK. RGB and CMYK are color modes used in digital design. RGB, or red, green, and blue, is the color of the light emitted from your computer screen. When mixed, these colors can produce a broad range of colors, millions actually, allowing for bright, intense hues. CMYK, or cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, has its origin in the world of printing. Cyan, magenta, yellow, and black inks are applied one after another on white paper to... There you go. If you go to a printing press, you have a cyan layer, a magenta, and a yellow layer, and then black for an outline, and that's where your color comes from. A white piece of paper passes through the printing press four times in order for it to be finalized. Your computer printer is CMYK. Other on white paper to produce a full color image. For this reason, it's always best to design in CMYK color space so your printed material. This is a big thing that happens. You save something RGB and then you send it to your printer and it will look different. Your colors will be icky or off. If you save your, um, if you save your um, image in, or your, your work your, in, in a CMYK, your screen will match your printer. Those will match what you see on your computer screen. Mm -hmm. So to put it simply, RGB is for web design and CMYK is for print. When you work in CMYK, you may notice a color shift between artwork or photos that were originally produced in RGB. Yeah, see? Something looks this way on your computer screen, but when you print it, you notice how the reds have faded. This is because CMYK doesn't have near the color range that RGB does. Most of the time, the shift is barely noticeable or not a big deal. But sometimes an intense blue or red will appear off or dull. If you feel the need to adjust these colors to better match their RGB counterparts, software such as Photoshop or Illustrator has great tools for fine tuning colors. Unfortunately, because CMYK doesn't have the same range as RGB, the colors will never exactly match. However, with some experimenting and tweaking, you can get fairly close. That's it for this week. And I have another video that's very similar, but those are the things to watch for. A lot going on in color. So again, play with it. Have a dominant color and a contrast, or maybe two, try the triadic design. Play, have fun, just don't overdo it, okay? Anyway, have fun with this this week. See, don't overdo it. And I have the bad ones listed. So, whoop, someone says hi again. Hello, Britannica. Anyway, she says bye. I'll record our critique session in a second. Say bye to the class, Brit. Brit, Brit. Bye. See you later. Do, do, do. Okay. Have a good one. <laughs>